Today's big question is, should athletes perform burpees? Now I've seen a lot of training programs out there. I've witnessed a lot of practices and a lot of sessions um, for athletes in a team setting and or in a private setting. And I have seen burpees being programmed into their workout. So today we're gonna talk about do athletes need burpees and are they helping them reach their performance goals? What's going on everyone? This is Mark Bruce with Fit Strength Performance and today I am going to unravel the understanding of should athletes perform burpees? So before we actually dive into what a burpee is, it's important that when you are looking at creating a program for your athlete, you have to dive into a few questions and thoughts in order to create um, whatever is on the paper to elicit the result or adaptation that you want so your athlete can improve and excel in their sport. So when I think of putting words down on a paper in a training program with my client or clients or teams, I ask myself a few questions. And this should be asked, especially if you're thinking about programming burpees into the program. Now let's first understand that you can, I'm not telling you you can't do burpees, you shouldn't do burpees, they're terrible for you, but I am identifying are they the best exercise out of all the exercises there are for athletes and adults, are they the best to help them get the result that they want? Ian, this, this stems from five-year-old all the way up to the professional level, you know, your 25-year-old, your 30s, your 50s, whoever your client is. So when you're looking at should I program burpees, you should first ask yourself, what are your client's goals? What are their goals in their sport? Are they trying to jump higher? Are they trying to have a, more, a better first step? Are they trying to um, in, increase their endurance? Um, are they trying to get rid of aches and pains from overuse? Um, because that'll help you start to put more exercises um, in that pool of appropriateness so they can achieve their goal. Next, what are you trying to achieve? You know, when I meet with an athlete, the first thing I ask is, where do you want to go in six months? And then when they tell me, then I'm going to identify what am I trying to achieve for them in their first phase, their second phase, their third phase. Um, because, you know, for a lot of the athletes I deal with in that basketball world, right, they want to jump higher. Well, what we do month one will be different from month six. Um, and we may not even do a lot of jumping, but there is that plan and progression to, to enhance their strength, explosiveness, or resiliency. So you have to program based on what you're trying to achieve in that program within that phase. Next, risk versus reward. Now, there are a lot of cool exercises out there that'll help your social media um, you know, feed enhance, your followers increase, and also um, get the attention of your client. However, some of those come with a high risk. For instance, doing you know, a clean or anything that, that involved a lot of pounding on the joints, on the wrist for basketball players. You gotta ask yourself, is a clean the best for a seasoned basketball player who may have had a wrist injury um, in basketball, you're falling a lot, or just doesn't have the mobility. Do you wanna spend more time working on mobility in a three to six month off season? Or do you wanna give them more bang for their buck to give them a guaranteed movement that, that will help them reach their goal? And the reward, what's gonna help them achieve that result in the safest and most efficient way? Next, how can it help them in their sport? You know, so when you're looking at that programming, how does it relate to their sport? Now, this isn't being, um, this isn't me saying you have to over-specialize and say, you know, we're going to do this basketball euro step on a BOSU ball and a box jump. This is identifying how does this exact movement influence what you'll do on the court, field, or ice. And now last, time. How much time do you have with your client? If you only have one session a week and they're going to have their season in three months, you will program differently if you have six months and three sessions a week. So your time will permit what you should be putting on that paper or administering in that workout. So this is just what you should think about when it comes to programming. So what is a burpee? Now burpees were you know, made popular when CrossFit first got big. Now, th and this is not gonna be a conversation to go down whether CrossFit is good or not. This is just identifying that burpees really were established 
um, you know, when CrossFit got huge and now they're, they're being implemented in a people's workout. So a burpee, and forgive me for my drawing, uh, I'm actually kind of impressed with how this turned out, but a burpee essentially you're starting standing up, you bend over, round over to the ground, you're getting into a push-up position, and then you pop up from the ground, and then you jump up in the air. Um, and for most programs, it, it typically is programmed at the end of the workout or in some circuit fashion to you know, pretty much increase your heart rate and help facilitate more of a fatiguing effect during that workout. Um, so some people you know, will do it as a finisher at the end of the workout. Um, and that's what I've interpreted based on what I see. I've never, in all the articles and all the books I've read about increasing strength, speed, or power, you know, no, no one's ever said that burpees are for that um, you know, trait of athleticism. Um, so however, this is what a burpee is. Now, some of the biggest struggles of burpees are that number one, you know, you start off in a fine position. I don't know anyone that really starts a burpee off in a poor position. But the big issue that I see is that second phase of that burpee, where you get this rounded approach of jumping onto the ground. And if we look at some back injuries from adults and kids, it stems from bending over too much and gives them that soreness. I don't know if there's any research articles out there that have identified that enhanced amount of burpees can cause back problems. However, a lot of individuals that I've worked with and a lot of the articles that I've read in reference to back pain stem from bending over an excessive amount and having poor posture. And then next, what I see for athletes is you know they're jumping on their wrist. So they're doing almost a belly flop on their wrist. You know, so if we think of prerequisites between before doing exercises, I want to know, can my athlete do a push-up? And this will dictate, is a burpee good for them? Because if they can't do a push-up, you're asking them to load up by doing a belly flop on the ground, and that could really stress their wrists. You know, so if I look at a basketball player or a football player, or baseball player, that, you know, baseball player and you're throwing, basketball player, a lot of shooting, if you aggravate that wrist, that is going to affect them in their sport. So this is where burpees may not be the best um, exercise to give them that risk to reward ratio. Um, and then next you're jumping. And the next thing I see with burpees is when we're talking about jumping and we'll get into this, you know, we look at jumping, we need to have a good foundational pattern of snapping down with those hips back, chest up, and then um, really promoting motor control. When I explode up, I need my arms to come up, and when I land, my arms should be coming down. I shouldn't have this thing where I'm here when I jump. And you'll see a lot of people who are doing burpees, you know, they jump down in that push-up position, they explode up, and then they arms go down as they jump. As you notice, you're throwing momentum down as you're trying to go up. So this can really affect the motor patterns in your brain if you're an athlete who is expected to explode high using the, you know, your arms and legs, but now you're doing an exercise that is enforcing you to throw your arms down as you jump up. So now we're getting some, um, you know, just confusion in the brain. So this would be what a burpee essentially is. All right, so to wrap all of this up, we need to look at what are the KPIs, the key performance indicators for athletes. Now this may vary from coach to coach. However, in my belief, as far as relating it to a burpee, here are the key performance indicators for athletes. You know, if we look at, this isn't the best picture. However, it's gonna depict, this is ideally an athletic position. You know, we have the ground. If we notice, you know, right, we have that flexion of the ankle, some good dorsal flexion, knee in that positive shin angle that we need, whether it's going to explore vertically, change a direction laterally, or be a good runner. We have a good hip hinge, and then also a flat back right there. You know, so those are those key points um, that athletes need to develop. So here we have movement first. Do we have mobility in these, uh, in these areas that are gonna help the athlete be a better athlete? Do we have this hip hinge to let that pelvis, you know, go from neutral um, and then go, for, you know, be able to tilt anteriorly or posteriorly, whether we're looking at landing or jumping or stopping so we can absorb force appropriately. Then we have strength, right? In order to be powerful, we need to be strong. We need our tendons to be resilient. We need our muscles to be dense and can last a long season and or the wear and tear from sports. 
then we have power. We need to be fast and explosive, whether it's jumping and running. And then last, load management. And that's very important for our youth athletes and even older athletes. So these are those key performance indicators when we're talking about what an athlete needs. And in my view, burpees, although they can't elicit a fatiguing effect to enhance um, you know, endurance and conditioning, I think there's more risk than reward to that exercise. And there's a lot, there's a lot other exercises that can give you more bang for your buck. Because again, at the end of the day, if our athletes can't move well, can't hip hinge and are not strong, then trying to get them really tired may not be what they need in that moment, in that phase. So when we're talking about burpees and what athletes need, whenever you're going to think about adding that exercise into that program, is it going to give that athlete what they're going to need to reach their goal for you to get, for, for you to have, um, have them be able to do what you want them to do to be a better athlete, and then in the long term is going to keep them healthy.